today's project is to coat the new uh, competition package GTS wheels that I just got for the, uh, the 1M. Uh, I don't know why I'm so excited to put stock wheels back on the car. It's like, it, it, uh, it'll make me appreciate them even more. So I'm gonna do G-Technic C5. And here's a interesting uh, question, and I'm sure many of you don't actually know the answer, will have the answer to. It's, this is a year old, or like uh, 10 months old. So notice I have, this was a 30 milliliter bottle that I bought, and I did, uh, I did a, a couple of coats on my uh, Volk CE28Ns for the S2000. Uh, no, what wheels did I do? No, this I did a single coat on the new method wheels for the truck. Uh, the S2000 wheels I did Kamikaze Stance. Uh, and Stance versus this, I mean, I, they seem pretty similar. I can't say that I like this much more than that or vice versa. Uh, but the question is, this is 10 months old. So it's still liquid, still could clearly go on the wheels, but is it good? You know, to a, this is a, whatever this is, $50 bottle of stuff. Is this viable? Should I use it? Now, you know, I'll answer that for you right now. I'm not going to put it on the wheels because I just bought these expensive wheels and I don't want to, I don't want to go back and, and, uh, and put this on there and then have it not functional. Uh, and the other question is, even if it wasn't functional, how the heck would you know? <laughs> right? So I'm going to take all this time, prep the wheels, prep the tires, get them ready to go, put old coating on there, and then hope it's going to work. So instead, I'm going to grab a new bottle. So let me grab that. So here's the cool part about now having shelves full of awesome stuff. I've got it on the shelf. I just go grab it. I don't know why this is weird dynamic that I'm having with myself where I have all this, I buy it at cost, and yet it feels like I'm, um, like I'm wasting. You know, like if I just buy it and have it shipped to me, like I don't give a crap. But now it's like on my shelf and I have this like weird, like, oh, I don't want to use that. Like I don't want to waste the money. <laughs> it's so weird. So I should be more, uh, more inclined to, to go grab the product. So we have, I have 30 milliliter bottles and 15 milliliter bottles. Uh, and I think, you know, I know for a set of wheels that 15 milliliters is gonna be more than enough. When does that look like a lot more than 15? So that's a 15 milliliter bottle. This one, aha, that's how you can tell. So actually the bottle that I had before was, was, was uh, 15. So here's a 30 mil, here's a 15 mil bottle on the left, on your right, my left. And I mean, this is a ton. So to do a set of wheels, truck wheels, you know, I used X amount. Uh, so, you know, a 15, we're gonna find out, but a 15 milliliter bottle should easily be able to do two coats of product. So we won't need the 30 mil bottle for this application. So I'll also, we'll also be able to answer that today definitively. I'm gonna do a set of normal, you know, the wider sports car wheels and we should be able to, um, we should be able to finish the job with a single 15 milliliter bottle. So let me put this back on the shelf. All right, so here's the plan. Uh, I've got Shine Supply Wise guy, uh, which uh, if, if Jeremy sees this video, get a kick out of this, I called this simple green. He says it's not. I trust them. Uh, so this is uh, this is a much more aggressive, dilutable uh, uh, rubber cleaner product is what it what it's designed to do, to to do. And so I always use Wise Guy when I'm wanting to strip everything off the off the wheels. And so you can dilute this, uh, or you can use it straight up. You know, so uh, you can dilute. Uh, let's see. And I think, uh, I actually, I think this is recommended to dilute no matter what. So dilute two to one. Uh, so we're gonna do dilute that. The other advantage is this is the only product that I've ever had that is eaten through bottles. Uh, so we're gonna be testing. I got all my new bottles here, new different types of bottles with different types of sprayers. Uh, and I'm gonna be you know, testing out you know, how these more aggressive products work in them. So plan is do the tires first, we'll denib it. Then we'll clean the tires with a combination of Wise Guy and Stoner's Terminator. So we'll we'll degrease them and, and get them uh, get them prepared. Get all the all the mounting lubrication soap and all of that stuff off of them. I'll denib them, cut the little nibs off, 
Uh, I also have some uh, some all-purpose cleaner, so I'll probably just uh, I'm going to mix some of this up, but I don't really see. I don't think I have a need for it. I mainly just want to get it in a bottle to test it out. Uh, and then we have uh, Adam's wheel cleaner, so I'll clean the wheels, which will be a real quick exercise just to get those cleaned. After that, we'll we'll dry them, so we'll dry the wheels and uh, clean them with eraser. So these are brand new satin wheels, so I don't really see the need to polish or clay them. So we'll just give them a good cleaning, use eraser on them to get all the, any residue or, or any soap left over off of them. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll do eraser. Then I'm gonna do a coat of C5, and we're gonna go out and test all the cartridges. So I'm gonna test the cartridges out. And then, uh, then we'll let it sit for three or four hours. Uh, and toward the end of the afternoon, we'll put another coat of C5 on it. I'll probably then think about, I don't know if we'll get to mounting them today. I'll probably mount them. Uh, and then after they've I've had several, you know, maybe a day or so of curing, uh, then I'm going to top it with, uh, with bead maker because I'll continue to treat them with bead maker as my topper, you know, going forward. So, uh, oh, and uh, to finish the tires, we're going to do uh, Carpro Pearl diluted two to one. So let's mix up some of this stuff and then I'm going to go outside. It's like 45 degrees and go freeze my nuts off working on, uh, working on the car. These are pretty cool. So I have 750 milliliter, which I guess is coming separately because they didn't, they're not here. So this is the one liter version. This is a 500 milliliter version. And then we have different colors, which denote different types. And then we also have these other uh, bottles that are a little different in structure. Now, these have an interesting design in, oops, in that it has a straw that apparently is stuck. There we go. So this has a really interesting, much different type of straw the only thing I have noticed is it is susceptible to kinking and you don't want to do that if you can help it. It has a weight with a filter on the, on the inlet. And so this fixes here. So there should be no reason why you ever really take this off. And then what happens is, is as you turn the bottle, so as you turn it, so if you wanted, if you turned it on an angle like this, then the weight follows the you know, the, the liquid, wherever the liquid is. So, this one, I want to do in the big bottle. So I actually like the 750 milliliter bottles the best. So this, this would be a 750 in this other design. But then they have traditional ones that have a regular straw. So, I don't know, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to see. I really like how stout the threads are. You're really, you're, you're likely not going to wear out the threads on the bottle and it allows you to torque it down pretty tightly. So let's, uh, the other tricky part is these black ones aren't translucent. So I don't think we'll be able to see the liquid in here. So doing dilutions on this color is going to be a little trickier. And we have red, so I don't think red is really translucent either. So let's uh, let's just let's just let it roll. Oh, the funnels fit on these two. So I'm gonna mix this like. I wonder if you can see this. You can see, you can't see the product at all. That is a disadvantage. So. The goal here is to get these bottles here, get people using them, show them some value, and then get them to make it the way exactly the way I want it. So that's the plan. So we'll go fill, uh, let's go fill this up with water. Be right back. So here's, uh, here's a kind of cool part about these. So the thing I just recognized is a little harder to fill up if you can't see through it. So that we're gonna need at least a fill line or something. Once it's full, it's full. Uh, so, um, interesting thing so you know I don't have any leaking I've been able to through like rigor like squeezing and dropping and beating it up I've been able to get some drips out of here out of this connection uh, but this one doesn't appear to be doing that so again these the goal would be eventually be able to just throw this on my floor in my car in my car and not have any leaks at all but I think I, I don't trust it at that doing that at this point but the beauty of these bottles I mean this is a, a leader and it's just balanced so 
darn well to, to, to use and to spray. And one of the things that I always had a problem with with the Quasar bottles, not only the balance, uh, is uh, this would always come unscrewed, you know, so it would come, it would, uh, it would you know, I'd always be retorquing it. Uh, and, and so this, the beauty of this is it doesn't hit my finger. Again, I still think even, I mean, I've got reasonably large hands or larger hands and my, uh, uh, the, 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 the 750 milliliter bottles are the perfect size. If you have smaller hands, you know, the 500 milliliter would be, would be best. I like to have more product, but I think again, 750 is perfect. So there's our wise guy mixed up and, uh, let's put some wheel cleaner. So wheel cleaner I use straight up. Let's get some wheel cleaner in here and the red bottle. So the red bottles and the black bottles are the same with the fancy little straw. So my wager is I'm going to need, because people are going to mess these up, I'm going to have to have a bunch of these, uh, these straws as backups. I'm sure once we get these out in the wild, we'll find all the problems. So obviously we need blue. I want these these counterbalance bottles, these funky shaped ones, I want them to be in uh, translucent and then OG blue. Again, I'm not pressing my luck yet. So hopefully I can get enough early adopters to help me put these things on the map. Because red is not really my style, but I think I'll bring red in for those who want red. You know. But um, you know, the intention is to make generic lo generic labels. So I'm not going to brand it Wise Guy, or I'm not going to I'm going to brand it Rubber or Tire Clean Rubber and Tire Cleaner. I'm going to brand it Car Soap. I'm going to brand it you know whatever Wheel Cleaner, so that we you can put whatever the heck you want in it. Okay, there's some Wheel Cleaner. Let's get some APC in a bottle. So we can go, uh, let's go three to one. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle. Yeah, this is, this is the best size, man. The 750, which is 26.4 ounces. I know we're cross-contaminating here. If I'm lucky, Bryce will cut that out for me. Make me look good. I'm sure you guys are like me. I don't like any of the uh, leftover foil. You know, like Michelle will open up the jar of peanut butter and it'll be paper all over. I don't like that. I've got to get it all off. And I usually end up dropping some in the darn liquid and I got to try to fish it out. Uh, the woes of being a psychopath. But if I'm going to have this bottle for a while, I want it to look decent. Boom. Clean. It's the only way to fly. Now, let's try to do this without making a mess. So we'll go, whatever that strength is, that's what we're going with. And a little more. I don't ever use APC on interiors or anything like that anyway, so this would be for like the uh, engine bay or something. So this sprayer is a little, a little different. Seals are different. Play with this, see how it does. You'll be uh, happy to know that I use some filtered water for this. Chilled filtered water, which will also make it harder to mix. So I probably should have used it because it has a warming feature on there. Probably should have done that. P, P, C. I always rebel against the names the companies come up with. Wise Guy, uh, Power Clean, uh, you know, the Creature. I want to call it something simpler. Just for some reason, like Pearl doesn't bother me. I don't know. Okay, we got some APC. Might as well finish the job here. Let's put some bead maker in a bottle. Um, we go through a lot of bead makers, so we want a full-size bottle, I think. Uh, this stuff smells like magic. This is making me second guess and wanting to put some sort of scent in uh, the decon soap. I don't know, to me, it just like the placebo of uh, if you put if you put a scent to it, 
it won't feel as strong. You know what I'm saying? Like it'll it'll weaken the uh, placebo of it working. There's a bead maker. Yeah, dude, these bottles. Even though they look a little odd at first, took me a little while for it to come around on them, to have those on the shelf. And Bryce was just saying, people put like the OG, put like a bolt here, and then have it come down, have the logo come down the back side. So when you put it on your shelf, you can have them all lined up. I'm down with that. That's legit. Okay, and now we need to make some pearl. So I've been using pearl diluted half, 50%. 50 so let's put pearl in something else to try. Let's put it in one of these blue ones. I don't like to have all this uh, not matching, but I do need to test this out. The only problem is how do we, how do you dilute this properly without, I don't have a uh, measuring cup here. How should I do that? So let's mix it up in here. This will be a bit more scientific or at least a little easier to eyeball. And then we'll pour it in. Something about diluting pearl. Why am I doing that? Something about diluting this seems really expensive. Although it's the complete opposite because we're making the product go further. And we'll just keep it in here. We'll just keep it in here. Let's just mix up this whole thing and then we'll have this as our new pearl container. All right, so here's our pearl. These are, this blue is perfect, man, because that's semi-translucent. You can see the white in there. This, I need to get them to make this blue in that bottle. Because this one is not nearly as ergonomic. I'm going to hit my finger. I don't like that. But we'll still have these. I'll probably still do these. So that, uh, you know, people have the option to buy it if they want. Buy it and try it. All right, let's go jerking around. Let's go do the project that we're supposed to be doing. What do they do? Oh, ma'am. Clamp, clamp marks. That one's the worst. But Shoot. All, all of them have these little clamp marks. Well, I'm definitely not taking my HREs there then. Dang it. I wish you didn't show me that. Really? All right, step one is to denib. It's always easier to do this now than later. When the tires are dirty, they're the stickiest. You can denib them a little quicker and easier. You can use a nail clipper or some other little device of some sort, some little dikes or something like that, but this is what I got here right now, so this is what we're gonna use. All right, so let's do the tires. Nothing quite like washing when it's 40 degrees outside. So the beauty of new tires is there's hopefully no weird crap on them other than the soap for mounting. This wise guy is really slick. There we go. I know, I know, everybody's gonna be, did you see Larry's video where they have a wheel stand? Well, I'm not production cleaning wheels like this, so no, I don't have one, no, I'm not getting one. Yes, I would, that would be great. If we build a uh, detailing facility, I'll get one. Yeah, these are actually really clean from, right off of that. Okay, let's do some Terminator on here just to, just to do it. I usually do that, let that sit for a few minutes. The problem with it is not very, uh, you know, it doesn't do well with 
water. So you're probably actually better off doing it before. Actually, that's the procedure that I changed, is we should do Tarminator first when it's dry. Yeah. Because what I used to do is then I'd add a little bit of this just to lubricate it. Again, this step is probably largely unnecessary for this, but this is the key process that you need to do to make your tire stuff, your pearl, not turn brown in 30 seconds, you know, in like a, a, a half a day. You know, people are like, I use pearl, it didn't work. Well, none of these water-based tire dressings, you know, Ammo Mud, uh, Carpro Pearl, uh, Adams VRT, Chemical Guys VRP, none of them really work unless you prepare the tire. And if you already have some like silicon based, really greasy type dressing on the tire beforehand, like we had it on my GT3 RS, like I, we literally physically couldn't get that crap off. It just took months and months of cleaning and heat from the road in order to get it to break, break down and wear away. So for a while, we had a difficult time or I had a difficult time getting my dressing, the Carpo Pearl, to work. It's pretty windy out here. This is Adam's wheel cleaner. So when I do the wheels, then I generally put it up like this. Figures the tire guys freaking jacked up the inside of the wheels. I wish I didn't see that. I don't know about that. This is what I'm afraid of, is some of these have kind of a wonky pattern. That ain't no good. So if your wheels are already used like you know or, or they're they're not new like this then you're going to need to involve clay god forbid hopefully not polish but you might have to polish them as well so i'm cheating a little bit in that these are new now to date i really haven't had a car long enough to have the need to like coat them again but you know, you, you know my uh, apprehension on coatings and my, my uh, preference for wax and sealant, the ability, to be able, the ability to be able to remove it and start over. Well, with, with wheels, I, a wax doesn't, I find doesn't last very long. Speed, heat, whatever. Waxes just don't, don't do very well. So you, I, I always, I've always coated my wheels even before I use coatings really. So I used to use Optimum, was it Optimum, whatever, OptiCoat 2.0 and whatever the original version was. I think I'd put original A quartz on my wheels and ruined a set a long time ago. Uh, but this, um, this process of coating, one possible disadvantage here is if I did, let's say I was gonna have my car for a long time and I did wanna take the coating off and start over, God bless you, trying to get it off of here. I mean, trying to polish all these little cracks and crevices to get the failed or the older coating off, that's the part that I'd be inclined to just buy some new freaking wheels rather than try to deal with that. So that is one potential disadvantage I think that people underestimate. If you're gonna keep this car for a long, long time or keep these wheels for you know five, six, seven, eight years when the coating eventually fails, and it probably will in a year and a half or two years, how are you going to get it off? How are you going to get it out of here and there? You're going to be sitting there polishing with your finger and then who knows if it even comes off. And the biggest issue with if it's not, if the coating isn't off, how am I going to, uh, the new coating isn't going to stick and you don't know. You don't know when the coating's off. It's like there's no exact science to say, okay, I polish for X amount of minutes with a certain product and it comes off. So when I raffle this car off, this 1M off, and uh, I forget, failed to mention we're putting these on the 1M. 
uh, when I raffle this thing off, good luck to the other bird, to the other guy. Okay, so that's the preparation. Uh, I'm gonna wash the other wheels and then I'll come back to you and we'll uh, get them dry and uh, prep for, for coating. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, the floor, the floor. 